having talk shows, we'll be having so many things uh, through this broadcast uh, that God has given to us. And so uh, make sure that you're tuned in. Make sure that uh, uh, you are there, uh, ready for the gospel. Make sure that you are ready there. Uh, sit together with your relatives. Sit together with your friends. Sit together with uh, uh, your children. Sit together with your close friends and everybody that you can bring on board. I beseech you that you bring them on board so that we can do this uh, work of God that uh, he has given to us, that it can be a collective uh, um, effort uh, to push the gospel and to reach out to so many. Uh, uh, our details will be given to you. Uh, you, can, you can even reach to me through my YouTube channel at Pastor Charles Combo. Uh, it's a young YouTube channel, but I'm intending to grow it, to grow it up to another level. And so you can subscribe, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can reach to me. Uh, my telephone numbers will be available to you so that you can reach out to us uh, for prayers and for counseling and for any other thing that you'll uh, want to contact us to contact us for. You shall be able to be able to do that. And so, uh, without a waste of time. I want us to share the word of God uh, for the next few minutes to share the word of God so that we can uh, take our lives to another level. Uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, the book of Genesis, if you can go with me to the book of Genesis, the book of uh, Genesis, uh, the book of Genesis, uh, chapter number six, I want to talk about the grace that was upon Noah. So, the book of Genesis, uh, chapter number six. Uh, I think, uh, are you there? Are you there? The book of Genesis, chapter number six. From verse six, the Bible says, from verse six to verse 22, the Bible says, it's a long reading, but uh, be encouraged, be encouraged so that we can go together and flow together. Uh, Genesis chapter 6, from verse 6, the Bible says, And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth because of the corrupt deeds that the man used to do, because of the evil things that, that man used, used to do, because of the things that man used to do. God said that uh, my soul, my, my spirit shall not strive with man forever. For he is indeed flesh, yet his days uh, shall be 120 years. So verse 6, the Bible says, And the Lord was sorry that he had made a man on earth, and he was grieved in his heart. God was grieved in his heart, for he had made man. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, the Bible says, So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the earth, from the earth, from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am so that I have made them. Verse 8, the Bible says, But Noah, but Noah, but Noah, but Noah, there was somebody that God, that God said, but. I wish you would be that person that God shall say, but. But this person in this family, but this person in this business, but this person has a unique character. This person has a unique feature. This person has something unique that attracts me to him. Verse 8, the Bible says, but Noah found favor. In the eyes of the Lord. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 9, the Bible says, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. Not that, that Noah was a just man, first. Secondly, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. Noah was a just man. Noah was a perfect man. And Noah walked with God. Three things that you, shall, you, you need to uh, uh, put together. Uh, that Noah was a just man. 
Noah was a perfect man. And Noah walked with God. Mm. Verse 10, the Bible says, And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was corrupt because God, the earth was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. Not that Noah was a just man, a perfect man, and a man who walked to God. So that means that Noah did not involve himself in the corrupt deeds that were happening in those days. Noah was not found in the violence that was on the earth. Noah did not uh, involve himself with anything that would bring violence in the face of the earth. So the Bible says, so God, verse 12, so God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupt their ways on the earth. Verse 13, and God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come. God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. My Jesus, my Jesus. The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through, through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Verse 14. And make yourself an ark. Make rooms in the ark. Make, your, make yourself an ark. Make rooms in the ark. Mm. And cover it inside. And outside with pitch. Verse 15. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubic. It's width 50 cubic. It's height 30 cubic. You shall make a window from the ark for the ark. And you shall finish it to a cubic from above. And set the doors of the ark in its side. Now this is the assignment that God is giving Noah. God wants to destroy the earth and everything that is inside the ark. But he has found a just man that he's using and is giving Noah instructions of what to do so that him being a just man will escape the destruction that was about to befall the earth. And God says in verse 15, And behold, I will make and, and, and bring flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life everything that is on the earth shall die verse 18 but i will establish my covenant it is my prayer that god shall establish his covenant with you bible says that i shall establish my covenant with you. Mm. And you shall go into the ark. May God establish his covenant with his people. I pray that God will find you just and a perfect man. And somebody who is walking with God. So that the covenant of God will be with you. May you be a person that walks with the covenants of God. By Jesus. The covenant that cannot be understood by men. May you be a partaker of the covenants of God. My Jesus. Mm. May you reach a level that you will have covenants with God. My Jesus. But I will establish my covenant with you. And you shall go into the ark. You, your sons, your wife, and your son's wife with you. Verse 19. 19. And of every living thing, of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Verse 20. Of the birds after their kind, of the animals after their kind, 
and of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. Verse 21. And you shall take for yourself of all food and that, that is eaten. And you shall gather it to yourself. And it shall be food for you and for them. Thus Noah did. I want you to note verse 22. Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he did. Thus Noah did according to all. According to all, not half. According to all that God had commanded him. So he did. Noah accomplished. Noah did all that God had commanded him to do. He didn't do half of it. He didn't do a quarter of it. He didn't do three quarter of it. He did all that God had commanded him. He was not like King Saul. There was Saul go and destroy. And he destroyed some and brought and brought back king and brought back the king with the fattened uh, calf. When you are told to destroy, you need to destroy. When God gives you an, an assignment, you need to do it to the letter. When God tells you that this is what you need to do, my son, you need to do according to what God tells you to do. Every assignment that God gives to you it is an assignment that needs to be completed completely. It is an assignment that goes that, that God gives to you, having faith in you that you shall accomplish it. When God says something, he has a reason to why he's saying it. And he has a reason to why he has given that instructions. And he has a reason to why he wants all his instructions to be followed to the letter. Because he knows what he's doing. And so the Bible says that men were corrupt on the face of the earth. And God said that my spirit shall not strive with men anymore. And that the, the days of a man shall be 120 years. And so God purposed to destroy the earth because of all the corruption that was found on earth. And the Bible says that Noah found grace. Bible says, and verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace. I pray to God that you find grace. You find grace before God because of your just life. You find grace before God because you walk in perfection. You find grace before God because you walk with God. When you walk with God, you shall find grace. Grace shall be, shall be attracted to you. Material grace. Ministerial grace. Every kind of grace that is aligned to your purpose shall be attracted to you. Every kind of grace. Noah found grace to do this act. You are able to find grace for what God has assigned for you. You are able to find grace for the purposes of what God is planning to do in your life. You are able to find grace for the assignment, for the divine assignment. Of what God has put in you. It doesn't matter the, 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 the oppression that shall rise. The opposition that shall rise. The rejection that shall rise. As long as God has put a purpose in your life. He shall supply grace to sustain that purpose. The thing that we don't understand is that when God gives you a purpose. When there is a purpose, first of all, you need to find the purpose of your life. You need to find that purpose that God has given to you. 
Many Christians are saved to go to heaven. But apart from going to heaven, there is a purpose that God gives you here on earth to accomplish it. And that purpose is attached to your life. If you want to see God working in your life, work in the purposes of God. And when you work in the purposes of God, he gives you enough grace to accomplish it. Most people find the purpose of God, but they are not able to accomplish it because they fear that they are not able to do it. But when God gives you a purpose, I tell you the truth, he has supplied enough grace. If there is a thing as enough grace, then he has supplied it enough to accomplish that purpose. Despite the oppression, despite the opposition that shall arise, despite the circumstances that you will be in, God shall supply grace. My Jesus, my Jesus, all grace, all grace, all grace shall be supplied to you. All grace. Ah, Malaba Kasuka. All grace shall be supplied to you. All grace shall be supplied to you. Hmm. My Jesus. Ah, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. May you rise up and say that God has given me all grace. All grace is upon my life. All grace is upon my life. My Jesus, my God, my God. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians 9, I know you know the scripture very well. Second Corinthians 9, verse 8, the Bible says, And God is able to make all grace. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Now that's the grace that I'm talking about. The grace for your purpose. God is able to make all grace. God is able, my Jesus. God is able. God is able to make all grace abound. Abound towards you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things. Shall have an abundance for every good work. And so God is able to make all grace abound towards you and abound towards your life that having all sufficiency in all, all things you shall have an abundance of every good work and so noah receives grace for this work that is before him but the grace is attracted to him because he's a just man the grace is attracted to him because he's a perfect man the grace is attracted to him because he's a man that walks with God. And none was found like him who was able to walk with God. None was found like him who was able to be just. And I'm very sure that because Noah was a just man, he had so many enemies. You know, corrupt people do not want just people. Corrupt people do not want perfect people. Corrupt people do not want people that walk with God because they will rebuke them. And so I'm very sure Noah had enemies. Noah had opposition. Noah had people that didn't like him. Noah had people that hated him. And so now, now God brings an assignment and it is not an easy assignment. You will see as we go on. It's not an easy assignment. There are, there are, there are, I'm very sure there, was, there have never been an ark that was built before, before them. There had never been an ark that was seen before them. That is why God gives him the length and the width of how he's supposed to build this ark. And so, an assignment is given to Noah. But Noah already has enemies. Noah already has opposition. Noah already has pressure in his life because of his just life. 
But God does not see that. God sees his, his stand as a just man and as a perfect man. And so he knows that this man is capable to do this assignment that I'm going to give him. And so God gives him an assignment to build an ark. And so this assignment that Noah receives is an assignment that has not been seen before. If it was able to be comprehended by this, by, by our minds, then God could not have given Noah such an assignment. And so God gives him this assignment to build an ark. And when he was starting to build an ark, I'm very sure opposition rose against him. Because when God tells him that you shall go in with your children and with the animals, there was nobody that was willing to go in with Noah. Nobody hid to the voice of Noah. Nobody saw what Noah did and said, eh, perhaps this is what was right. Everybody saw Noah as a madman. Everybody saw Noah as somebody, what, what, are, you, what are you really doing? What is this that you're building? What is this that you're putting together? What is this that you're telling us that a flood, floods shall come, that shall destroy the earth? We've never seen anything like that. God cannot do that. Your God is not a true God. I'm very sure he faced a lot of words against him. A lot of discouragement. Your God is not a true God. What kind of a God is this that wants to destroy man? Who are you that's, that, 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 that you speak such words? And so, a lot of words of unbelief perhaps were thrown to him. But he decided not to heed to those words. He decided to heed to the words of God and built the ark. I have not seen such a purpose placed in a man like that. God gives you an assignment that is against the whole world. An assignment that is against the whole, whole earth. When God gives you such, a, such an assignment, men will think that you've, you've, you've gone mad. Building an ark, you're taking animals into the ark, yourself into the, the ark. And that is the reason why people did not follow him. From the whole earth, nobody believed in, uh, in Noah. Nobody believed in what he was doing. Because they could not comprehend to their mind what Noah did, what was doing. There was just something that was born or was birthed by God. It was not birthed by corrupt men. It was not birthed by the works of men. Corrupt men cannot understand the ways of God. Corrupt men cannot understand the language of Noah. Corrupt men cannot walk the, the walk Noah was walking in. Corrupt men cannot understand what Noah was doing. And so it must be definite that Noah faced opposition. That Noah faced difficult times. In the period of building that ark, Noah faced opposition. When God gives you an assignment, as long as it's from God, it doesn't matter if the whole world rises against you. Go forward to that assignment. Accomplish it 100%. You shall receive your reward for that in heaven. Do what God has asked you to do. Accomplish it to the fullest. Do it. Do it. Do it. If the all earth rises against you, speak the words of God. Don't be like uh, uh, Jonah. Send to never you decide to go to Tashish. No, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. 
do the purposes of God. People, Christians are so fearful. Born again Christians are so fearful. How will people take me? What, how will people see me? How will they perceive me? When I say God has sent me, and God has told me to do this, the, oppress, the, the, the opposition that shall rise against me shall be so high. And so you decide not to go with the vision that God has given you. Just because you fear opposition. Just because you fear hate. Just because you fear people rising against you. How much more did Noah face for you to fear that small purpose that God has put in your life? That purpose that God has put in your life is not, is not against the whole world. But you still fear. You're still afraid. God has told you to go and minister. Be a, be a, be, be, go to, uh, be a, a choir member in a church. But you grumble with God for years. God has told you to go minister. Be a pastor. It becomes hard for you. God has given you an assignment to open a business. But you're just calculating with your mind, mere mind, that how is this going to be? If it is God that has spoken, do it. I say, if it is God who has spoken, do it. If it is God who has spoken, do it. Stop asking questions. Do the commands. Do it all according to what God has given you. Doesn't matter if family rises against you. Doesn't matter if friends leave you. Doesn't matter if things happen against you. Just do it. Do what God has asked you to do. Do what God has asked you to do. Accomplish that purpose. Accomplish that purpose. It is what God has given you. Do it. Do it to the fullest. And so, Noah receives opposition. He's seen as a madman. How? You can just imagine to yourself. Yeah, just imagine to yourself building an ark. Imagine to yourself building an ark. An ark that you've never built before. That's why God gave him the length and the width. Imagine people asking you, what is this that you're building? Seriously. And you say, God has spoken to me. People will ask you, which God? Which God? Which kind of God? What is sure that many of us are going, some of us or so many of us are going through such a, you know, when something that has been birthed by God, if something has been birthed by God, it cannot be understood by men. And so you need to understand that. So when you face op opposition, it, it doesn't worry you. Anything birthed by God, no matter how small it is or how big it is, if it is birthed by God, men will not understand it. Men of this world will not understand it. How difficult is it for you to understand that what God has put in you, men will not understand it. And so don't uh, look for pity from men. For acceptance from men, for people to approve what you're doing, they will not. I'm sure you'll want people that are close to you to approve it. God is not looking for approval from men. God doesn't want you to get approval from men. He's the one that has birthed it. He's the one that has given a go ahead. Then yours is to do it. And so there are so many of born again Christians that you are born again for years. Your life has never changed. Your situation has never changed. And the reason to why it has never changed is because you are afraid to walk in the purposes of God that he has put before your life. You will see things becoming smoother when you walk in the purposes of God. God shall release graces, all grace, 
and it shall be sufficient for you. God shall release all grace and it shall be so sufficient to you that things shall work out for you because you're walking in the purposes of God. Look how difficult it is for Noah. But he decides to pursue the purpose of God. And verse 22, the Bible says that that's Noah did according to all, not some, not little, not three quarter, but to all that God commanded him. And, and uh, verse 18, the Bible says, but I will establish my covenant with you. And so when Noah does this assignment, the Bible says that God said, and I will establish a covenant with you. And you shall go in the ark. God uh, 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 established a covenant with Noah. When God established a covenant with you, there is no sickness that shall be your portion. No defeat. No struggle. No hardship. Because God will be having a covenant with you. And God shall not allow his foot soldier here on earth to go through something that God does not want you to go through. He will be your protector. He will be your guide. You will see God in all of your endeavors. Because you are in a covenant with God. Because you are in a covenant with God. All of your endeavors shall be in the mind of God. Nothing that you shall do that shall miss the backing of God. Everything shall have. Oh, the hand of God will be there to give you a backing. When people... Uh, oppose you, God will be giving you a backing. There's nothing sweeter than having the backing of God. I'd rather stand against the whole world but have a backing of God. You'd rather stand against people who are opposing your faith even though they are your family, even though they are friends, even though they are close friends, even though they are who, I don't know, I don't care. But as strong as they are against God, you rather stay, stay in the side of God. Because when you stay in the side of God, you will have a proper backing. I say you will have a proper backing. You will have a proper backing. A heavenly backing. You will go into a covenant with God. How difficult was it for Abraham? Think about it. God gives Abraham an assignment and tells Abraham that you need to sacrifice your son Isaac. I need him as a sacrifice. Remember Noah, remember Abraham was looking for a son for many years. He was looking for a son for many years. He was not able to find a son for years. Then here again God comes. First God gives him the son. In fact he tries even to compromise through his wife. Through Haggai to find a son. But God tells him that that's not the son. God gives him, him, him a son at his old age. And then now at his advanced age God wants to take that son away from him. How difficult is, is, is that assignment? It's so difficult. It's so hard. But because Abraham has, had learned to trust in God, because Abraham, because Abraham had learned to have faith in God, he decided to push on with this assignment that God had put in him. He took Isaac. On the way, Isaac asked, is, asked Abraham, where is that sacrifice that we're going to, 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 to sacrifice? Because Abraham had faith in God, he told his son, God shall provide. I give you that challenge today. 
that purpose or that assignment that God has put in you, it doesn't matter if you are capable on your own or you're not capable on your own, God shall surely provide. And most of the assignments that God gives to us are assignments that we cannot do it on our own. An assignment that God needs to intervene. I encourage you today. I beseech you today. I give you the push today. Go ahead with that plan. With the plans of God. He will provide. He will provide. He will provide. Let it stick into your mind. That anything that is of God. You cannot provide it on your own. God has to provide it for you. Yours is to step up. Is to step your faith up. Yours is to put yourself in a position for God to use you. Don't oppose it. Put yourself in that position. And tell God, I'm here. Now use me. Lord, I'm here. Now use me. Father, I'm here. Use me. You told me. You put this in my heart. Now that you have, you put this in my heart. Now I'm here. Use me. Provide. You tell God. You're the one who has given me this assignment. And so God use me and provide. Provide the sacrifice. Provide. No matter, the, no matter the oppression. God will be God in your life. God shall sustain you. God shall protect you. God shall be, shall, shall be God in your life. And whatever he says, he will do it. He is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he should change his, his mind. Numbers chapter 22. Whatever he tells you, he will do it. I guarantee you he will do it. My Jesus. Thank you very much uh, for being a partaker of this word of God, uh, the grace that was upon Noah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like us to pray together uh, uh, to conclude uh, our sermon today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for what you are doing in our lives. I thank you, Lord, for we've studied about the grace that was upon Noah and the task that was at hand. And Lord, my Jesus, it relates to the tasks that you've put upon our, our lives. And Lord, you are God who provides. Lord, you are God who accomplishes. Lord, you are God that does what you've said you're going to do in our lives. Do it in us. Do it in us, Lord. Do it in us, Jehovah. Do it in us, my Father. Do it, O oh God. Do it. We shall not be afraid anymore of the assignments that you put in us. We shall not be afraid anymore of the purposes of our lives. We shall not be afraid anymore to do that which you have put in us. The grace has been released to accomplish the work. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, and I bless you. For you are going to be good to every one of us. We shall see your hand. We shall see your power. We shall see your grace. Thank you, Lord, my God. In Jesus' name. Amen. So wherever you are, whatever assignment that God has